For those that remember the Rocco Cairo, shape-wise, the Burst Pro looks like a new version of that. Here's a look at both mice. Notice I have a fairly narrow front with a flared out back. Mostly flat sides, nice subtle curvature to help with grip, and downward curvature toward the sides on the buttons, so no comfort grooves. It also feels a little bigger overall. So let's get into the dimensions. Grip width is about 5.7 centimeters. Length is about 12. And height is almost 3.9. I think it's a good choice for 20 by 10 centimeter hands, but because it is thinner at the fingers, maybe even 9.5 centimeters. That's for claw and fingertip, but it's not bad in palm for hands under 18 centimeters. And here it is next to some other mice so you get an idea of the size. I'd say it's a good shape, not amazing or outstanding, but a solid safe shape. Should be good for a fair few people. But while the Cairo had modular sides so you can choose if you want side buttons or not, the Burst has that beat in every other way. Starting with the weight, it's well balanced and only 68 grams. That gives it an expected weight ratio of almost 1 to 1, which is a good weight. For an explanation of the expected weight ratio, check the video link in the description. They use tolls to get the weight down, but they're all covered, only visible on the back, where they have a somewhat clear plastic. It's pretty cool. But there is one thing about this mouse that I really don't like. Here's the button sound check. Yeah, those left and right clicks. While optical switches have an advantage with being able to avoid double clicks, they don't have a good feel like a standard switch. And honestly, when I'm not wearing headphones, it bothers me to the point I don't want to use the mouse. I really didn't think clicks would bother me that much, yet somehow, they do. So for me, yeah, not a fan of the clicks. I gave them a go in some League of Legends. I think these are the types of buttons MOBA players are going to want to avoid. They're a bit too tight and it probably will strain you to click over a few hours. The buttons are fine in other ways though. Travel is good, no wobble, and I think they could have done better on the wheel because they used to have the best, and now they're not the best. And the side buttons could have a bit too much travel, but they're fine. Let's get back to the positives. I got one of my best sequences with this mouse. Check this highlight out. The combination of shape, weight and soft flexible cable make it a great mouse for first person shooters. I actually played quite well with it, despite being a bit too big for me. The sensor performance is solid, latency is low, and you have the usual Rocket software too, where you can change what the buttons do, set up macros, some color options, and of course change DPI steps. Can quickly mention it's mostly textured plastic, the sides being more textured than the top, which feels smooth. And that's about it. It's a solid mouse with great features, I'm just not really a fan of the buttons. And as always, it's personal preference, so see what you think. I enjoyed it, great entry into the top mice list by Rockat, not too much to critique, I just think they should work on the buttons more. Hope that helps, big thanks to Rockat for sending these out for a review, but as usual, all thoughts are my own. Links in the description if you want to help support what I do, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.